Which one do you look at when you're not calm? That one. Do you look at you? No, you look at you. Okay. Hi, welcome to Fairview Range Focus. I'm Deb Boardman, the President and CEO at Fairview Range here in Hibbing. This is our monthly segment where we talk about health topics that are important to our community. Today, I'm visiting with Sherry Mahler, who is our Respiratory Therapist Supervisor, and Diane Blight, our Respiratory Care Practitioner in our Fairview Range Sleep Center. Today, we're going to be talking about respiratory therapy and the sleep center services and resources that are offered at Fairview Range. So, welcome. Thank you. Sherry, let's start with you. Why don't we just start with a basic question. What is respiratory therapy and when would a person need that? Respiratory therapy is a treatment that is developed to take care of patients that have problems with their breathing or to maintain their breathing status. Um, improves lung function. We do treatments like inhaled medications. We teach patients breathing exercises before or after surgery. We collect blood samples to analyze the, the lung function and we take care of equipment that helps patients breathe like ventilators, CPAPs, BiPAPs. Some of the patients that we see are patients with COPD, bronchitis, asthma, post-op patients to treat or prevent pneumonia. Um, we see patients that require our assistance to help them breathe as, it, as with ventilators or BiPAPs or CPAP machines. So the services you provide are all done at the hospital, some on inpatient, some on outpatient? All done at the hospital, except for our pulmonary function lab. We do take outpatients into that lab. Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. What is a pulmonary function test? A pulmonary function test is a test that the doctor would order to evaluate how much air you move in and out of your lungs and how much oxygen is being absorbed into your circulation through your lungs. And why do they do that test? They do that test. There's many reasons. They may be looking for um, the cause for your shortness of breath. They may be looking for um, medications that can affect your breathing that can cause scar tissue in your lungs. They may be doing a test to evaluate your lungs before you have surgery. The, uh, one of the other causes might be to see if the treatment that you're getting for your lung disease is helping. So what do you actually do during this testing? When you come into our pulmonary function lab, we'll have you seated and we'll put in a nose clip on your nose and a mouthpiece in your mouth, which is like a, a rubber scuba mouthpiece, and we'll ask you to do breathing in different fashions like fast, slow, um, deep, shallow, and that will, each test looks at a different parameter of your lung condition. So is a person sitting in a chair while you're doing this? Uh, we have a body plethysmograph, which is like a clear telephone booth. We have you sitting in there. Some of the tests require the door to be closed, and some of the tests allow the door to be open. OK. So no running on a treadmill? Th this test is done seated. <laughs> Great. OK. How long does it take to complete a test such as this? A test would take between an hour to hour and a half. Sometimes we need to give the patient breathing medications during the test and then reevaluate their lung function after the medication. Okay. So if you're scheduled to come in for a pulmonary function test, what kind of things are you as the patient required to do before you come in? How do you prepare for that? Preparation would be dress comfortably, it does not involve exercise. You could have a light meal, no smoking for eight hours, no breathing medications for eight hours, and no caffeine for four hours. And when an appointment would be made for you, we would um, tell you those instructions at that time. So you bring up a great point there. There's a lot of things that affect a person's ability to breathe, the caffeine, the medications, a lot of things that people don't think about sometimes. Right, right. And we want to measure the lungs before you have any medication on board or before caffeine would have a chance to interfere with the test. So. Tell me a little bit about the people that complete the tests. They're trained technicians, I assume. Yes, everybody is a respiratory therapist, and uh, we have special training from the company that we have our pulmonary function equipment from. 
So respiratory therapist is a person that has gone to school specifically to learn about lung function? Is yes, that? respiratory therapy is a program as such as nursing or lab technician, there's a program for respiratory therapy. Okay, great. If someone feels that they're a candidate for a pulmonary function test, how do they go about making an appointment? What's the process? We would receive an order for the test from your doctor or nurse practitioner and you would be scheduled for the test. We do testing two days a week from 7.30 in the morning and our last appointment is at 4.30 in the afternoon. So okay. we try to accommodate as many people as possible to fit their busy schedule. And those again are done all in Hibbing, correct? At the hospital in Hibbing on the main floor, we have a newly remodeled PFT lab. Like just renewed and updated, remodeled. yes. <laughs> great, great. Well, let's switch for a minute to talk about Sleep Lab, Diane. Tell people listening, what is a sleep center? What is that all about? Well, a sleep center is, is where you go to have your sleep evaluated. We can be looking for um, different sleep disorders. We're, we're a full service sleep center, so we test for all of the sleep disorders there are. And it's right at the hospital in Hibbing, and it's, uh, it's on the fourth floor, but we do occasionally use the um, during the week, we use the urgent care for our consultations with the sleep physician. When a person comes to the sleep center, what, what do you see? Is it an office? Is it a bedroom? What is it? Okay. The sleep center itself, we have two bedrooms, and we try to make them as comfortable as we can, and as much like visiting a hotel rather than a hospital. We have a regular size bed, not a hospital bed. Unless our patients require one, we can, get, we can put one in. Um, but it has its own private bathroom, it's a private room, it, there's equipment in the room. Um, sometimes people are a little nervous about the equipment, but there's cameras and microphones and such in there. But it's just so that the sleep tech can be doing the um, monitoring during the night. I've heard this spoken about before where people will say, geez, I'm so worried I won't be able to sleep because of all the equipment and things you put on people. But if you're in the sleep center trying to evaluate sleep, you probably don't sleep anyway, right? <laughs> well, most of our patients sleep really well. <laughs> most of them are overtired because they don't sleep well at night. And sometimes we have trouble keeping people awake while we're hooking them up. Oh. There's, there's a lot of wires that go connected to your head, your chest, your legs. Um, there's some on your face, but they're really very, they're not invasive. They don't hurt, they're not painful. They're just a little bit uncomfortable. Most people get used to it pretty quickly. So do they, they stick on like when you have an EKG with the little tapes, is that what they are? Um, some of them stick on like that and they're, they're a, they snap on, they have the little sticker pads and they snap on. Some of them are, are little gold cups that are pasted to your head, which is a water-based paste it very, there's no odor, there's no chemicals in it, but it's a conductive paste that helps. And those are the ones that go anywhere where you have hair. So the ones on top of your head, um, because we can't stick big sticky pads to your head. <laughs> we, that's, we, like, that's a good idea. <laughs> we paste a little, their wires and, and then they have a little piece of gauze over the top of them to hold them on. And they actually stay pretty well. Occasionally they'll come off during the night, but, but most of the time they stay pretty well and are not painful at all. <laughs> even when you take them off, hopefully. Oh, yeah, even, uh, yeah, they don't hurt to come off either. Most people are taking them off while we're getting them up in the morning, so. Easy thing to do. Easy, very easy. Tell me a little bit about the person that performs the sleep study test. Um, all of our sleep technicians are respiratory therapists that have cross-trained or gone to extra training to do the sleep tests at nighttime and they've learned to evaluate brain waves and respiratory patterns and heart rates and that kind of thing. Part of it's in their, in their respiratory training already, but more of the watching the brain waves and, and the leg movements and that kind of stuff. There's, there, so there's training, there's, you can, there is a credential that can go along with it. Um, several of our sleep techs have this credential. It's, it's Tell me the fancy name. <laughs> It's a registered polysomnographic technologist, or an RPSGT. Okay. <laughs> Adds a lot of initials after our name. <laughs> Great, but it does say that you are specifically trained to do these tests. Yes, we are. Great. And we have ongoing education throughout the year as well in order to maintain that credential. 
how would a person know if they might be a candidate for a sleep test? Most of our patients come to us referred by their physician and their physicians are asking them questions during their, their um, regular visits with them. But most of the complaints we see are snoring, very sleepy in the daytime, um, kicking, twitching, gasping at night, that kind of thing. Um, depending on which sleep disorder you, you know, is your complaint. But most of, mostly what we see is snoring and tired in the daytime. Um, and some of our patients will come to us with insomnia as well, and they're patients that just don't sleep at all. Mm. But if you, if you s discuss your sleep with your primary physician or, or your provider, and you have any of these symptoms, they'll refer you to the sleep center where we'll schedule you for an appointment to have a consultation with our sleep physician who's a pulmonologist and a board certified sleep physician. He, and he'll go over your symptoms and your history with you and determine if you need a sleep test, which type of the tests we do that you, you need. The person then cannot make a direct appointment. They must go through their physician? Most of the time. We do have some patients who were diagnosed in the past with sleep disorders and have not been seen for a long time and we start them over like a new patient and they'll call us and say, oh, I, I was on CPAP before and I haven't used it for years, and, but I wanna go come back. They, then we can bring them in, they've got a prior diagnosis. But most of the time we get our, direct, our referrals from the physicians in the area. You mentioned when you were talking about the physician that in consultation he'll determine what type of sleep test you should have. I didn't realize there were different kinds. Oh, yeah, the most common, of course, is for sleep apnea, and that's just your straightforward polysomnogram. That's a one-night test, most of the time one night. Sometimes we'll have to come back for a second test, but um, we also test for narcolepsy, which would require you to come in for an all-night test, plus stay for a whole day the next day. It's also an outpatient procedure, but it requires you to take naps all day. Some people think it's fun. <laughs> A great excuse to take a nap, right? Great excuse to take a nap. Um, so we also do um, testing for restless legs. We, we do have done tests looking for nocturnal seizures. Um, depending on, on what the complaint is and what the history is, there are several different kinds we can do. You mentioned talking about overnight. Are all the tests at least an overnight test? No, uh, most of our tests are, require an overnight stay. Uh, we do have some daytime tests that don't require you to stay the night before. Um, one of them is a maintenance of wakefulness test. Now we have patients that are say truck drivers or um, have jobs that require them to maintain being awake. The railroad, people work on the railroad, we also have like that, but people who require their job to keep them to stay awake that have sleep disorders that are being treated and some of them will have to come in annually and have a test that proves that they can stay awake oh. so they sleep at home in their normal environment they come up and they or they come in the morning and are given nap opportunities all day long and have to stay awake in them and to just to show that they can maintain wakefulness if they need to what about people who work shift work? Oh, <laughs> that's a sleep disorder. <laughs> it's been just recently um, declared a sleep disorder, shift work has. Um, it, we do occasionally do the nighttime test during the day for patients that, that work shift work. If they're on night shift all of the time and they stay in a night shift pattern even when they're not working, then we'll do a, their, day, their nighttime test in the daytime. Oh, okay. So you're pretty accommodating that way. Oh, we try. <laughs> so the person comes in, they have their sleep test, then what happens? How do they get the results? Um, in the morning, when okay, for a normal over, overnight test, in the morning the tech that did their test will give them an idea. Um, they can't give a diagnosis because the test hasn't been scored yet, but they'll give them an idea. Yes, you demonstrated sleep apnea. We tried the CPAP that worked for you. you know, so they'll give you an idea. Um, but the test that you, you do during the night is scored during the day, 
um, where we go through every 30 seconds of the test several times and, and count how many times you stopped breathing or how many times you kicked your legs or how long you were in what stage of sleep. And based on that test, the doctor will either order CPAP therapy or whatever else has been determined during the night. So it's gone through by a sleep tech and then the doctor goes over the t same test over again and makes his recommendations. Most of our patients, if they go on CPAP during the night, can get their own CPAP unit the next day or possibly a day later. So it's, it's rather quickly that we get them on treatment. Do they meet with the physician following all of that? Um, immediately after the test, the doctor will write a letter to them, and, and, but we do follow up about 30 days after the test. After you've been on treatment for a little while, we go over, there, there's a, a memory card in the machines that you use for sleep apnea, and we can take that memory card and download a report that shows how many hours you're wearing it, are you having mask leak, are you having problems, that kind of thing. And we'll bring the patient back in, sit down with the doctor, go over that report from the machine, and find out are they feeling better, because that's our ultimate goal, is that they're, they're realizing the benefits um, that you're not as sleepy in the daytime, your wife's not complaining about your snoring anymore, um, the neighbors have, you know, <laughs> stopped complaining. You, they'll let you sleep in the hunting shack again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. Yes, the, all of the, you know, so that you're feeling better. And the biggest, the biggest response or the best response that we get is people coming back saying, I didn't realize how tired I really was. I feel great. I'm not napping in the daytime. I'm not falling asleep when I shouldn't be. And and I can drive long distances again. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of benefits to, to having the treatment. And, and, then, and then we also have the patients who struggle a little bit with them wearing a mask at night. It's not a normal thing for people to have a mask on their face at night. So, you know, to be able to sit down with them and find the right fit and do that kind of thing. So we do follow-ups with them. You know, we call them and, and follow up with them, bring them in to see the doctor. You referenced the CPAP machines, and I know there are different ones. Oh, yes. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what they actually do for people. Well, a little bit about sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is when the, the tissues and the, and in the back of your throat collapse when you fall asleep. It's because your muscles relax, and there's maybe extra tissue or tissue isn't strong enough. And when it collapses, your breathing stops while you keep waking to open that airway, um, it, and that's what disturbs your sleep and makes you sleepy in the daytime. Well, the CPAP, it stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, and it actually, you put a mask over your nose, or, or your mouth and nose, depending on how, what, how you breathe, and it um, blows air at a set pressure to splint that tissue in your airway open to allow you to continue to breathe and get the deep restful sleep that you need because you're not fighting for air during the night. And there's several, like you say, several different kinds we have and they can be set on many different pressures and different settings. So in order to find the right one for you, I mean there's CPAPs, BiPAPs, there's ASVs which is for people who, who have a different type of sleep apnea where they, they're not breathing because of another condition, you know, um, so there's lots of different kinds and hundreds of different styles of masks because we know that God didn't make our faces all the same. <laughs> so, um, and fellows with whiskers, you hear that a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> they leak. <laughs> but but the, the home care or the, the companies that make these masks and design these masks have heard us and have made many different styles with, out of different materials and different different ways to work around whiskers and chubby cheeks and skinny cheeks and big noses and little noses. <laughs> and so it, 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 it's more art than science when we get to the mask fitting, but, but it's, a, it's an interesting 